Chris Bowen is probably the most blindly ideological minister in this awful collection of Labour losers. He's quite happy to punish everyday Australians who are still recovering from the pandemic and who are still suffering record high interest rates. Rather than provide relief for cost of living pressures, Bowen continues to push the most extreme green agenda of windmills, solar panels and EVs, while cheap and reliable gas and coal-fired generation is wound down. Now, even our dim-witted Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has realised that this path is almost suicidal. And, following the Biden administration's watering down of the US EV mandates, has finally tightened Bowen's leash and has relaxed the fuel efficiency standards a bit. It won't be enough, of course. The only way for Australia's electricity grid to remain viable, for power prices to remain affordable, and the mad push for EVs to be abandoned, is for this bunch of no-hopers to be voted out at the next election. But sadly, when these repeatedly failed policies continue to be voted in, I wonder whether the Australian public is smart enough to see what's in their best interests. Welcome back to M Guy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter X. As The Australian reports today, Anthony Albanese grabs wheel from Chris Bowen on fuel efficiency standards. Anthony Albanese has stepped in to overhaul Labor's fuel efficiency standards plan amid concerns stakeholders are being carved out of policy negotiations across government portfolios and forced to sign non-disclosure agreements banning them from speaking publicly. Under pressure from motoring groups, farmers, car manufacturers and trading partners to water down the new vehicle efficiency standard, NVES, Federal Cabinet on Monday night was expected to endorse a revamped plan taking into account Joe Biden's softening of US rules. Under an NVES model supported by critics of the government's plan announced last month, the trajectory of fuel efficiency standards would be flattened between 2025 and 2027, and targets would be back-ended towards 2030, allowing a slower change. There is also support for some four-wheel drive ute and SUV models to be granted a fit-for-purpose trajectory. Under the government's previous preferred model, attacked by the coalition as a family car and ute tax, Labour's goal was to achieve a 60% reduction in average new car emissions by 2029 forcing car makers to bring down the average carbon output of their stock sold into Australia. Such a move would require manufacturers to progressively sell more electric vehicles and hybrids into Australia to offset emissions from their petrol fleet. A credit trading system would allow suppliers who beat targets to trade credits with those who fell short. Car makers would be fined about $100 per gram of carbon over which their fleet exceeds the threshold. What is more shocking, however, but not at all surprising given how climate and energy policy is generally dealt with, is that key stakeholders were actively excluded from the process, essentially silencing any dissenting voices. The fuel efficiency standards impasse comes amid souring relations between the government and industry groups, business leaders and transparency activists over the increasing use of NDAs, threat to freeze out critics and blocking the release of freedom of information requests. Mr Bowen said on Monday the government had been consultative on the NVES despite the Federal Chamber of Automotive Industries and Australian Automobile Association, which had critiqued the government's approach, being excluded from a key meeting with government officials last Thursday. Just like the IPCC, where any scientist, no matter how credentialed or respected, who disagrees with the consensus is excluded and silenced, so are any critics of this government's mad fuel efficiency standard, which will force ordinary Australians to abandon their utes and trucks and buy hopeless EVs. Next year's general election cannot come soon enough. Let's hope the Australian public will be smart enough to do the right thing.